Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make an expanding uh, menu in Articulate Storyline. So something like this, um, which I made a, a very similar demo in a recent e-learning challenge. Uh, so it's a matter of clicking the menu and it expands, shows some topics, uh, of which then the user can click on the, the numbers and go to that particular topic. Uh, the idea being like this is that it's compact and in it can essentially go anywhere on the slide, um, in a corner or a down the bottom or top. Um, I've just done it in the middle just to make it easier for the demo. Um, but it's it's not it's fairly straightforward to put together. It just uses a layer. So this is the base, and then this these objects are actually on a layer, and then the three little topic circles are moving on motion paths, one to go out and then one to come back in, and then there's just uh, some hover states on the little circle names where you could put the the topic names. So let's have a look and see how we build that. So I've got a slide here, a second slide, and I've had to save a little bit of time, I have created some of the elements already. So for instance, I've got the little, that's just a circle with the word menu in it, could be a button, uh, could be a different shape. Uh, it's on the slide. Um, I'm being a little bit particular in this demo too about naming objects, so I've called this the menu open button. Uh, I've also put in a, a layer called menu items, that's where the three little circles are going to live and, and I'm obviously going to move those around um, as I add the motion paths to them. And uh, the, the, the menu button and the close button may have looked like the same object, but they're actually two objects, one directly on top of the other. So on the layer here you can see the menu button on the base is still there, I've just positioned this close button, it's exactly the same size and it's directly over the top uh, and it looks the same, so it looks like it's the same object changing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll, I'll come back down to the base, is I'm just going to add a trigger to this circle that is just going to be show the menu items layer when the user clicks the object I've called menu open button, that circle. Okay, so that's what happens. The user clicks that uh, circle and then this layer will appear. Uh, and then what's essentially going to happen is I want the three little circles to pop out from behind the, the close button. Uh, now another thing I've done just to save a little bit of time is for each of the circles I've actually created a hover state as well. So that when the user hovers over them they can see what that topic or part of the course is called. And if you haven't created states before, it's just editing the state, creating a new state and selecting hover from the drop down and adding your text where you want it to go. So for this number one, um, we are going to add some motion paths to it for this circle one. So I'm going to be in the animations tab a little bit. I'm going to add a motion path, a line motion path, and it's going to go straight down like that. Now, the circle is actually going to end up here, but realistically it's going to start in the middle of the bigger circle. And I really like how Storyline 360 now is the better kind of align options. Okay, so that's where it's going to start on the slide, and it's going to be that long. Now, however long you draw, it will d depend uh, on yourself. Um, but for this particular motion path, I've worked out that I only need the length, and this is another new thing in Storyline 360. You can actually enter your own length of motion path it's going to be that long. okay? So it's going to pop out from behind. Now there's a few things I change in terms of the settings. One is um, I don't want the, that object to take two seconds to come out from behind the circle, so I'm just going to bring that down to say half a second. Uh, another thing in Storyline 360 is you can name your motion paths. So I'm going to call this one number one open. And another thing, uh, and you may have noticed this if you've used uh, motion paths before, is they by default have a thing in them called easing, which is it's a, it moves the object moves a little bit slowly at the start and then a little bit slower at the end. Well, I want the motion path to move at a constant speed, so I'm going to turn the easing off, say no easing, so it just will pop out. Um, the trigger that's created with the, with the motion path is, is what I want. I want it to pop open when the timeline starts. So I want it to pop open as soon as the layer is revealed, timeline of the layer. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I, I want another separate motion path for it to move back the other way. So I'm going to click back on the circle, come to path op, uh, come to motion paths I should say, and add another line motion path. And but this time in path options I want it to go up. Again, it's different length, 
So I want to bring the length down to 100 like before. Okay. And again, I'm going to call, bring the time down to the same speed. And I'm going to call this one, one close. Okay. I'm also going to go to path options and take the easing off. So it will move at a constant speed. Now for the second motion path, uh, you'll see um, the close one that's put the same trigger, moving them both when the timeline starts. So the second one's going to be different. Um, I don't want it to move when the timeline starts. I want to move it on that second path when the user clicks the close menu button. So that way, when they reveal the layer with all the, the every, after everything's popped open, they can essentially stay there for as long as they want. And then when they click the big circle, that's when I want it to move on the close motion path. And then once um, it's moved and, and gone back behind the big circle again, I can add a trigger to say, hide this layer when an animation completes. And it's going to be the animation on my oval and it's going to be the close animation. So it's not going to move on that path until the user clicks the big circle. And then once it's gone back behind the, the big circle, then shut the layer down and we'll go back to the base. Okay, so let's just have a quick preview and see how that's looking. Uh, it's, it's always a good idea to preview as you go um, and see how things are working um, out. And this will load up and here we go. So we're on the base, we're showing the layer and then we go back. Now it's kind of moved up and, and it looks a bit weird and the button was appearing in front. So that's a bit strange too. So there's, I did that deliberately just to show you a couple of things. One is, see how my circle is sitting in front of the bigger one? That's not actually popping out from behind. So in the timeline, I'm just going to drag it down so it sits behind. I wanted it on top to make it easy when I was putting it together. Um, the second thing is when the object um, is down here after it's opened, I actually want the closed motion path to come with the object because the closed motion path is actually based on the object still being in the center. So I need to do another thing with the, um, with the second motion path, the closed one, in order for that to happen. And that is go back to path options and I need to turn on this feature called relative start point. And that essentially in this case just means wherever the object ends up, the, the, the other, any other motion paths on it will, will start from wherever the object happens to be. So if we do a preview of that now, that should fix us up. And all we'll need to do then is just replicate what we've done on the other two circles, just having the paths going in different directions. Open, closed, open, closed. And because I've done the hover state already, they can see the topic name. And the idea would be that they would click on that object there and, and potentially go to that topic or, or something and then close it back again. So I'll pop the, do the same thing for topic two. Now it's going to end up over the side here. So again, it's going to start off in the middle. I'll drag it behind the big circle in a second, but I'm just going to start by adding some paths to it. Now this time, I want it to end over to the side here. It's going to be 100 pixels. I want to turn off the easing. I want to bring down the speed and this is going to be too open. Okay. Then I'm going to add another path to this object. This time it's going to go over to the left. It's going to be a hundred. I'm going to turn off the easing. I'm going to bring down the speed and I'm going to rename it to close. And I'm also going to, for the close, just the close ones, we have to do the relative start point. Turn that on. Okay. And what I just need to do is look, check my trigger. So I, I want um, I want the first oval is going to be when the timeline starts. Uh, the second oval also going to be the timeline starts of the layer. 
I like to choose the layer there. Same with the first one. I want to have the timeline. So I find doing the timeline starts of an object sometimes can be problematic. So I always change it to timeline starts of the particular layer or slide that you're on. Um, I want to the second motion path, the close one. I don't want that to happen when the timeline starts. I only want it to go back into place when the user clicks again the close button. So the all of the open triggers will happen when the timeline of the layer starts and the close triggers will all happen when the user clicks on the, the larger object. And, and then the layers just needs one trigger just and it can be it could be any of the animations but I just did it on the first one. And then finally number three we'll add some animations, motion paths, a line. Now this one to when it pops out it's going to go up. It's going to be a hundred pixels. It's going to be a half a second. I'm going to call this one three open. And I'm going to turn off the easing. Then I'm going to add a second path to it. It's going the right direction. I'm going to make it 100. I'm going to turn off the easing. I'm also going to turn on the relative start point just for the close one. I'll bring down the speed and I'm going to call it 3 close. And then I'll just check my triggers. So I want it to be when the timeline starts of the layer. And I want it to close when, like move on the close path when the user clicks our close button. Okay. And then we'll just do a preview. So like I said, you just replicate that five, six times, depending on how many. You could like put these on a, a master slide and have it across your whole course. Open, close, open, close. Now, one of the things I haven't done that I'll need to do is in the in the layer there, in the timeline, see how the, the two and three circles were still sitting on the top? So I just drag the, both of them so that they're sitting. The, the menu close object has to sit at the very top of the timeline so that it covers everything completely. Do a preview of that and everything all going well should be working. Showing layer, hiding layer and then these objects on the layer. Well, there you have it. That's creating a little uh, expanding circular menu in Storyline 360. I'll catch you next time.